I'm Robin Higgins and this is how to use chemistry reference tables. All right, so there's a bunch of different tables and charts and graphs that you have to be able to use to solve basic chemistry problems. And so just as an example, I've drawn up a little pKa table. And so to be able to use it, there's basically two things. Uh, one is know what the chart means. So if you've never heard of pKa and you have no idea what an alkane is, this chart's not going to be any good to you. Uh, you want to make sure you're using the appropriate chart for whatever problem you're trying to solve. Um, in this case, uh, pKa is basically a measure of how willing a hydrogen atom is to become disassociated from a given molecule, and it changes based on functional group. So for instance, you have alkanes up here, which is just a functional group that consists of single bonds of carbon and hydrogen. And then you have water, and then over here you have hydrochloric acid. Uh, so that's the, how you use a pKa chart. So before you use any chart, you need to really understand what uh, is the information that it's giving you, right? And then two, and this is how we're going to solve our problem, is just know how to extract information and make conclusions. All right, so let's say that someone asked you, what's more acidic, um, an amine or a carboxylic acid? Well, we'd be able to use our pKa chart to answer this question. So to first do that, remember we want to look at amine versus carboxylic acid. You identify the two groups you're looking at. So we have amine here, carboxylic acid here, and we have our numbers, so 35 and 5. And remember, we're looking for the more acidic. And so 35, 5. And uh, the way that pKa's work is that the lower the number, the more willing the proton is to come off. In other words, the more acidic. So in this case, five is a lower number, so we know that a carboxylic acid is more acidic. And this kind of blends with point one because we would have to know the range that pKa's go and what's lowest and what's highest before we could have really answered the question. I'm Robin Higgins, and this is How to Use Chemistry Reference Tables.